I'm Christy Bilbrey. Right after college, I started my career in the Senate press office and then the White House. For the next seven years, I worked in corporate marketing before starting my own business. As soon as I did, the one thing I realized that none of those experiences taught me was how to market myself. Promoting yourself can mess with your head. Discovering brand storytelling and learning how to put it to work in my messaging saved my business. Once I learned this, I started teaching other business owners how to put it to work in their business as well. I created the Business That Story Built podcast to help strengthen the stories we tell ourselves and the stories we tell others. Audiences crave the human side of businesses. They want to get to know you, follow you, and interact with you outside of the buying experience. This can be intimidating to say the least. If you're ready to take your mindset and your messaging to the next level, then you're in the right place. Let's get started. Thank you so much for joining. We are continuing in the PR series today, and I am so thrilled to be able to introduce you to Today's speaker, I'm sure everyone listening has heard of the peso model, and we actually have its creator on today, Ginny Dietrich. She is the CEO of Arment Dietrich and founder and author of Spin Sucks, host of the Spin Sucks podcast and author of Spin Sucks, the book. She's the creator of the peso <laughs> model and has crafted a certification for it in partnership with Syracuse University. She is co-author of Marketing in the Round, co-host of Inside PR, and co-host of the Agency Leadership Podcast. Ginny, thank you so, so much for joining. Oh my gosh, I'm so happy to be here. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. I have to ask you, like, right off the bat, so the PESO model, as I was telling you beforehand and <clears throat> telling my interns, like, this hasn't been around since the dawn of time. This is actually something that was created fairly recently. But how did you take this from something in your head and that you used in your agency like 15 years ago to being taught to every student in every communications PR and marketing program in the country? Every PR agency talks about it, preaches it. How how does that happen so quickly? So there were a couple of things. And I'd love to say that it was some strategic, well thought out plan. And maybe <laughs> like we're all evil about it, but that was not the case. So we launched, I wrote about the model in the book, Spin Sucks. Mm -hmm. And through that process of writing and editing and editing and editing and editing the book, <laughs> um, we named it and we created a graphic around it. And the graphic, it, you know, in 2014 was very, very tactical. It was very much like, I think Google Plus and Vine were on there. So it was very much like these are the tactics that you should use. And in 2020, right before the world fell apart, um, we relaunched it because we were going into schools and we wanted to ensure that the next generation understood that it's more than tactics. It's actually a strategic integrated program. Um, but yeah, it was in the book and um, I didn't expect by any stretch of the imagination that it would take a hold like it has. And in fact, because I didn't expect it, I had to sort of work backwards to get it copyrighted and trademarked and all of that. Oh, wow. Um, <clears throat> but one of the things that we did that I think was really smart is in 2018, we said, as, as a team, let, let's see if we can start getting this into schools. And I had some relationships with comms professors just from Twitter, you know, mm -hmm. that I, I guess I can't call it that anymore. Um, X. <clears throat> whatever. <laughs> um, and so I started calling them and I started saying, Hey, listen, we've got this model. We have this process. We're going to create a certification around it. Would you like to teach it in your classes? And everyone said, yes, everyone. Yeah. So we talked to USC, we talked to Syracuse. I mean, we talked to everyone. And then Martin Waxman, who's a really good friend of mine, I hired him to help me kind of work that process because he's also a professor. So he had a different network of relationships and the two of us just made phone calls to our friends and wow. that's how it got into schools. The rest is history. Yeah. That is, yeah. That is pretty <laughs> wild. So why don't you just explain for those maybe who aren't as familiar, what exactly is the peso model and why did you come up with it? So one of the things that we were challenged with, challenged is a good word, I think, um, is that I had a very traditional agency. So we did media relations, we did events, we did crisis, and we did reputation management. That, that's what we did. 
And as you know, those things are great and they build really good awareness, but that you have peaks and valleys, right? So you might get the New York Times and the Wall Street Journal and the LA Times and the Chicago Tribune in one month, and then you don't have anything, Mm -hmm. right? And when you run an agency, clients are like, well, last month was great. (laughs) What are we going to do this month? And you're like, I can't get those again. Like, it's just not, that's just not how the world, world works. So we were looking at ways to fill in those valleys so that it was always consistent, so that we were building awareness and helping with lead generation and helping marketing do their job and, 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 and. Mm -hmm. And this was at the time that, you know, Facebook was started to become available for, for businesses and LinkedIn launched and Twitter launched. And you had all this stuff happening at the same time. And so we really looked at it and we said, okay, what, what's the opportunity here? So if we have the the New York times and the wall street journal, which are great, what can we do to extend their life and to fill in those valleys? So clients aren't saying, well, last month was great. What are we going to do about this month? So that was really the genesis of it. Interesting. Okay. So, and then just kind of explaining what exactly it is, the main components and, you know. Yep. So it's why paid media, paid media, earned media, shared media, and owned media. Um, and people will say to me, well, I think that's ridiculous because from a PR perspective, you'd, ne- you'd never start with paid. And I agree. But the number one rule in branding is that you create something that people will remember. And right. if I were going to order it in in order of press preference, I would do owned and then shared and or earned and then paid, right? Paid would be last, but OS or OS, like I have to actually think about it, like (laughs) what that acronym would be. So the only reason it's called the peso model is because it's easy to remember. (laughs) Not that, not because you start with paid. So typically in a communications program, you would start with owned. So you'd start with content marketing and you would start with content because you need something on your website, on your blog, you know, maybe you have a LinkedIn newsletter, whatever, maybe you're on Medium, whatever it happens to be, you have something that you've created that you then you can share on social, you can point to when you're doing media relations to um, show that you have credibility and expertise, and then you have something that you can boost from a paid perspective. So without content, you really can't do the other three as well. You can do them sort of in a silo, but they don't work as well. So you start with owned and then go to shared or earned, depending on what your goals are, and then to paid. Makes sense. That makes sense. <clears throat> and so you're looking at it from having, you know, if you're looking at a piece of content, then it's how do we, I guess that kind of leads into the next question. How do you use that to really maximize messaging? So like if you're working with a client and you know what their goals are, you know what their messaging is, how do you kind of strategically think through how to weave that through the peso model to really maximize that? Because, you know, it's, I don't want people to think it's just a matter of, okay, well, I've posted here and it's just like copy paste throughout, (laughs) done, right, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Like what is kind of the the strategy behind how it would be practically implemented? You know, I mean, this is a crappy answer, but it depends, right? It depends on what the goals are and who who the organization is. You know, if it's a consumer business, it's going to be a little bit different than a B2B tech company, right? Um, But what we find is that most organizations aren't integrating it. Like you may have social and paid media in marketing, and maybe even have content in marketing and may, and then in communications, you have media relations and maybe you have some content, but r- rarely do they integrate together. So one of the things that we always do first with clients is we try to integrate those, those pieces. So my favorite, my favorite thing, and this is across the board is when we're working with a client at the very beginning and they'll say, well, hmm, social media belongs to, to marketing, we're just never going to get a hold of that. And I'm like, okay, stop. (laughs) We have to be able to do this together. And so a lot of it, I mean, really is change management inside the organization to get marketing and comms to work together. Hmm. If they're an organization that doesn't, that isn't that sophisticated. So maybe they have one or two marketing people, communications people on their team, and maybe they don't have any. Um, it's really about, okay, let's set the foundation. So like we started working with a new client about a year and a half ago and they had nothing. 
They, they had like two pages on their website. So we went in and said, okay, here's what we're going to do. We're going to spend the first six months creating content. We're going to launch a podcast. We're going to create blog posts. We're going to, we're going to start to build an email da- database. And that's what we're going to f- spend the first six months doing. And then we started to add on social media. And then probably just three months ago, we added Google ads and LinkedIn ads. We haven't even started media relationship. We Mm. haven't started the earned media yet. So it's probably, I bet it'll be two years before we even have a fully integrated model because they had nothing and we had to, we had to start to build. So like I said, it depends and it depends on where the organization is, but mostly what we see is that we have to sort of break down those walls between marketing and communications so that they work together toward the same goal. And I feel like I've seen recently just the way technology, the digital world is evolving. I feel like those, what used to be really clearly defined differences between marketing and PR. I have so many people asking me, what exactly is PR now? I'm really confused because I thought it was just media relations and I'm like, it's changing. (laughs) And so so I, I feel like yeah, what is that? I, in in my mind, the way I you know perceive things, it's kind of like I see it as communications, or which I I guess I think of PR and communications is fairly synonymous. I'm I'm sure there's technical like they're technically different as kind of a large umbrella, and all these things are pieces of communications that fit underneath it. And marketing is one, and and it seems like most PR agencies, you know, they they fill all those needs now. So I feel like. Do you feel like that's starting to, those walls are kind of naturally starting to break down dependent on like, you? no, they're not, no. they're not. I don't, I don't think so. I mean, just based okay. on our experience and yeah. I've also, I also paid really close attention to research on this and the research shows that marketing is beating our butts on hmm. this stuff. So marketing is taking over paid, they're taking over earned and they're taking over shared. And they're saying you can, you can keep earned because we're not good at that. Hmm. And so when I, when I, I'm actually giving a keynote on Monday in Florida And one of the messages I hope that I leave behind is that all of those things are what we do naturally. We're storytellers. We, so marketing takes owned media and they create it from a brand perspective, right? They're creating sales materials, sales collateral, lead nurturing campaigns, things like that. We use it from a completely different angle, a completely different lens where we're telling a story and we're educating and we're providing expertise and thought leadership. And so Instead of saying the pace of model belongs to communicators or the pace of model belongs to marketers, the pace of model belongs to both, but mm-hmm. we approach it from different angles. Okay. Marketers should absolutely approach it from a brand perspective. And we need to approach it from the like building awareness, building trust, building credibility perspective. And we do that. That's what we do. <laughs> that's, mm-hmm. right? that's what we do. So the idea that marketing is going to take that over just blows my mind. Stop it. <laughs> <laughs> um. Well, and that that also brings up a good point in terms of measurement. So I know you talk a lot about the KPIs and and you really need to be able to track this and marketing could be tracking things. And so how do those kind of come together in the measurement? So I we worked with a client all the way through the pandemic for about three and a half years that had, it's probably one of, their chief marketing officer is probably one of the smartest people I've ever worked with. And he sat down with me and he said, if you were to redesign this department, including marketing, communications, Mm -hmm. growth marketing, all of it, what would you do? And he and I outlined what it would look like. And we spent three years building that team. And it was, in some cases, we had to hire new. In some cases, people shifted their job responsibilities a little bit. But it provided the opportunity for you to really look at, for us to really look at it as a holistic piece. And because of that, when we talked about measurement, we all had one goal. And the goal Mm. was to build the the brand, to build credibility and to drive leads because it's a a staff's business. So that was a definite goal. But what we discovered is through that, that marketing was doing all of the things that they're great at doing, nurturing leads and all that. But because of all the data that we had at our fingertips, communications was too. I mean, we were driving a significant number Mm. of leads because people were like, oh, I heard you on that podcast and I'm really interested in talking to you. Or I saw you in this magazine or I saw your CEO speak at this conference. That's all communications, right? And so we were really great. He did such a good job of building 
the data to capture all of that. And we could point to actually communications delivered this much in revenue. And it was the first time I've seen it work that well. Hmm. Um, and we've sort of mo- remodeled that with other clients since then. Yeah, I love that. And I um, <clears throat> have been going through some of your materials lately, and I love that you you do give a lot of examples of kind of specific tools and things that people can use to make this much more practical and easy. Because I think in PR, it's measurement is kind of this, uh oh, what do we do? We either just go with impressions or, you know, what do we go oh. with? How do we justify it? So um, maybe we can like dig a little deeper. So for someone who's like, yeah, I, I want, I know we're, we're capturing some good stuff. What is the best way to kind of get things moving? Because it is, it's wild to me how I hear stories about so many really large established companies that you think, oh, I'm they've got to have their act together. And when it comes to the measurement, they don't. They really don't. <laughs> no. <laughs> so what what would be some tips? I a lot of the the listeners are kind of on the B2B side. And if maybe they're like, yeah, we we know we need that. We'd love that. Where do we start? What do you recommend? So I would say st- at the starting point, there are three things that you should look at. And every everybody who has, has Google Analytics set up can, can look at this. You should look at direct traffic, organic traffic, and branded search. So from a direct perspective, that means somebody's aware of you because they're typing in directly to their URL, your website address, right? So they are aware of you. So if your direct traffic increases month over month, it's because your communications program, which is building awareness, is working. From an organic perspective, you want to see increases in that because that tells you that everything that you're doing, your content, your social, your media relations, that's all working to drive somebody to your website. But from a, what's the word I want? Like secondary perspective. So they're not directly putting your URL into their address line, but they're actually searching I'm looking for a PR firm in Chicago. And because of the work that you've done in those three areas, you pop up first, you know, in that first 10 listings in Google search. Mm-hmm. So you you look for an increase in direct traffic you, for your awareness. You look for an increase in organic traffic um, to your website, just because that all of your other Peso model things are working. And then you look, you go into, uh, I can't remember the exact address, but Google search trends. I think it's Mm -hmm. search.google.com and type in your brand name, the company name, the brand. If you have brand brand names, type those in and look at the increases, because if there's an increase in in search for your brand, Mm -hmm. that means you're doing your job as well. So those three things, I mean, you can go deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper. And certainly, you know, if you're a B2B uh, communicator, you know, you have to do marketing qualified leads and sales qualified leads, like all of that. Right. Um, but those are the three things I would always start with. Perfect. Yeah, those are great. And I know you get into on the shared side. I think there, there's so much that, especially with Facebook and Instagram, they provide that's wonderful. Yep. Um, and I know you have kind of a, a ranking system that yep. PR can use to to say, okay, a comment is worth this much and a reshare is worth this much to kind of calculate. The save out. is worth, yep. Yep. Yeah. Yep, How... Yep, yep, yep how successful your, your efforts have been. So it, it can be done. It It can can be done (laughs) and it's not hard. It's not hard. It's all literally, especially with, with Google analytics for now, it's all all of those three things that I just mentioned to you are in the dashboard that they provide on the, when you open analytics. So you don't even have to set up a report. It's just right there. Um, You know, you, you may need a quick tutorial to, to figure out what it is that you're looking at, but it, it's that easy. It's literally that easy. Yes. I love that. I love that. And then in terms of when, when you are working with a client and maybe they haven't been using a peso model approach to the way they do that, and maybe they think, well, this is great. Why do we need to change that? How do you get the buy-in from them that hmm. maybe they should take a different perspective and and how that can help them? It's really like a question. Um, typically, this is going to sound really snotty. Um, <laughs> typically, they've hired us because that's what they want. Yeah. 
And yeah, and that's, that's true. If they're coming right? to you, then they yeah. know about it. Um, and true. usually what happens is somebody will come to us and say, Hey, I'm looking for a PR firm and your name came up. And so I will say one of the very first questions I will say is when you say PR, what are you looking for? And they almost always, to your point earlier, say, well, you know, we want the media talking about us. And I will say, that's great. Not what we do. So I'm happy to refer you to some other firms that that's what they do, but that's not what we do. And nine times out of 10, the person calling will go, well, what do you do? Mm -hmm. And then I explain the PESA model and they go, huh. And then they may go away and do their own research and check things out and they may come back or they may come back and say, you know, I really appreciate your time. We really just want the earned media, the media relations. Can you, can you recommend some firms for me? So it ha- it happens one of those two ways. Usually somebody's hired us because that's what they want. Is the right. Yeah, makes sense. <clears throat> um, in terms of, you know, we talked about showing up on Google search and, uh, you know, checking that for measurement. And I think this is, this is new uncharted waters, but just kind of getting into some of the changes and you look at chat GPT and kind of <laughs> where's this going and, yeah. and moving more away from a SERP, the search engine results page uh, approach that, well, your GPT may be going and finding these. And so how, how does PR start to um, adapt or what, what changes do they need to consider moving into this? And, and maybe we just don't know yet, but wondered if you had some thoughts on that. A good question too. Um, so this is akin to when Alexa, (laughs) if I say it, she'll answer me. Um, the Amazon enabled voice enabled (laughs) assistant, (laughs) um launched and everybody was like oh my gosh we have to figure out voice search the fact of the matter is and this is the same same thing with with generative ai you have to understand how it works and you have to understand that there are going to be some changes but if you're creating really good content that your audience wants to consume be a video a podcast or written content it's going to cover all of those so I remember, you know, when this voice enabled stuff came out and like everyone freaked out. How are we going to do this? We have to shift to voice so that we're showing up. And and it it didn't it it wasn't that big of a deal, because if you were already creating really good content that people were already consuming, you're going to show up in those places. And ChatGPT is going to pull stuff. You know, the, I think the biggest challenge we have right now with AI is it's not sourcing unless you specifically right. ask, ask it to, right? Um, <clears throat> so it may pull stuff from your content and not give you credit. So that's going to be a challenge. But um, so the community from a communication pers- communications perspective, you have to make sure to say, please source this material for me. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, I don't think we have to freak out about it just yet because the the goal is to create really good content and the rest of it will take care of itself. What are some other shifts that you see taking place in kind of the the media and PR landscape that people need to pay attention to or maybe prepare for? So AI for sure. Right. Um, and if you're if you're scared of AI or you don't believe in it or you think it's a flash in the pan and it's gonna go away, please, please, please just test it out. And you can test it out from the perspective like. Last November, I remember a friend said, I'm going to test this out. And he typed in, um, let's do an interview with, uh, oh, shoot. He did it with one of the philosophers. I can't, who's dead. I can't remember who, which one. Um, So he would ask it questions and then the AI would bring back answers based on what it thought this philosopher would say in today's Mm -hmm. world. And it was actually really fascinating. I mean, it's totally fictional and made up, but it was really interesting to look at it from that perspective. So from a communications perspective, if you you think about, okay, maybe I'm staring at a blank screen because I have to write an article and I don't know where to start, just put in a a, a prompt into chat GPT and say, you know, write 500 words on this topic or take this headline and write 500 words on it or whatever it happens to be, just test it out. It's mm-hmm. not going to be the final draft. Like you're going to get something back and be like, okay, <laughs> but it'll get you started. Mm-hmm. And one of the things I love to do is I actually just did this right before we got on this call. I took my podcast episode for next week and I took the the script and I dropped it in there and I said, 
optimize this for search, write me some headlines, write mm-hmm. a meta description and give me seven tweets. And it went like that. It would take me a half an hour to do that, right? And it gave it to me in three seconds. Is it something I can use, copy and paste and be done? No, right. but it gives me a starting point. So I would say 100% everybody should be checking this out. Mm-hmm. You should be using it. Just It makes your life easier, right. so much easier. So don't be afraid of it. And the other thing I would say that we're facing right now is I actually belong to a um, <clears throat> Facebook group of journalists and I just stalk. I don't ever comment because it intimidates me, but um, I, I pay a really close attention to what the con- what the conversations are. Mm-hmm. And they are talking about how things have shifted so much that they don't even have time to talk to a PR pro. Right. Even, even PR pros who they've used as sources for years, they mm-hmm. don't have time mm-hmm. because they've been given there've been so many layoffs that they're doing the the job of five or six people. And that's the biggest theme I see from that is, is they just don't have time. So we have to figure out how we're going to get, how we're going to do pitching and how we're going to get in front of these journalists who don't have any time to talk to us, let alone respond to an email. We have to figure out how we're going to shift our strategy to be able to get stories placed. And do you have any examples of who's doing that well so far? Um, I actually have a really good friend who's probably, I, I I think she's a genius when it comes to media relations. She can get anything placed. It might take months, but she, she does it. I can't, I can't even like pinpoint exactly, but what she does is she looks for trends and she's, she, so she has a client right now who's um, a, a self-made um, millionaire. She's a woman She's like 55 years old. She's kicking butt. She was just named one of the most powerful women in in the US by Forbes magazine. She's kicking butt. So she does have a great subject, mm-hmm. but she's what she does is she looks for trends in the media where they're profiling other like people. Mm-hmm. And then she just starts to, to go in. And so she'll be like, okay, I'm going to call this person and they're not going to answer my phone call, but I'm going to at least leave a voicemail so they know. And then I'm going to send an email and they're not going to respond to my email, but they're, they're I'm going to be top of mind. So she does the what we typically do from a content lead nurturing perspective hmm. with journalists, right? So she's just t- staying top of mind mm-hmm. and it's really personalized and it's short. And, and then when they're ready, um, and actually that's how she got Forbes to name this client because she did all that work. She did that. Um, she she just stayed on top of it. It took three years, but she yeah. just stayed on top of it. Yeah, that's really smart. She's, really she's a smart. genius at it. Yeah. Like, she, there's no one better, I don't think, in any relationship <laughs> with her. <laughs> oh, well, I love it. And I thank you so much for just kind of coming on, breaking down Peso, giving your thoughts on where things are headed, how to be prepared. Is there anything before we end that with peso or or kind of what we we're just talking about with changes that are happening that you want to leave listeners with in terms of mm. um, their PR approach? Yeah, I mean, I would say artificial intelligence is changing things. There are search engine optimization specialists that are changing things. Like if you you have a podcast, so you probably get pitched by people. And have you noticed mm-hmm. like you can tell if it's, somebody that actually knows what they're doing versus a robot or an SEO specialist that right. has told has been told we need links in mm-hmm. many, as many places as possible. So go get them. And they email you and they're like, we'd like a link. And you're like, no, <laughs> <laughs> but they understand the importance of getting a link from another website. And so that's the the strategy that they're using. So you, you have artificial intelligence, you have SEO specialists, you have marketers, all of these disciplines are, I mean, for lack of a better term, taking away from what we do. Mm -hmm. And so I would say, really think about, you know, how you can include a fully integrated PESO model program in everything that you do Mm -hmm. and do it from the storytelling lens that we're so good at doing, because that's, what's going to get you further ahead. Yes. Really smart, really smart. I think it is, there are so many different titles and disciplines, like you said, that it's easy to think, well, well what are they doing versus what I'm doing? And, and right. how do these pieces right, right, right. So yeah, that makes sense. Just let them all 
come together and work together and be a holistic approach. Very, very smart. Well, thank you so much, Jenny. I really oh my gosh. appreciate your thank time. You. And, and you- Olivia Benson thanks you as well. <laughs> <laughs> yes, she's such a cute puppy. I mean, she's been so well behaved. She's been time. so good, right? She hasn't moved. <laughs> Far better than if my puppy were in here. <laughs> <laughs> um, and you guys all need to go check her out. Go to spinsex.com. And she has an amazing LinkedIn newsletter as well and all kinds of great materials to help you. So thanks again, Jenny. Thank you. And for everyone listening, have a great week. Until next time. To succeed in business, you need brand awareness, authority, and trust. To get those, you need visibility. Podcasts offer each of these. It's a unicorn platform because it gives you the scarcest resource in digital marketing, attention. Did you know that 80% of podcast audiences listen to the entire episode and more than 50% consider buying from a brand or individual that they discover on a podcast? Building your own show and audience takes years. Grow faster by guest speaking on other podcasts to get more leads, build your SEO and strengthen your brand. To learn how my agency can help, email me at hello at christybilbury.com.